All right, praise the Lord. God is good. All right, let's pray. Abba Daddy, we thank you. Thank you for another day. We just welcome your Holy Spirit that's here with us. Speak to our hearts, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our heart to receive your word. Let the word that go forth may land on good ground and bring forth fruit to perfection so that we may be perfect in you, lacking nothing for our destiny. We bind the thief that comes to steal the word in Jesus' name. Lord, help us to guard the word of God in our hearts with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue our lesson. It's our 27th, I believe, 27th lesson on diligence. Diligence slash laziness. So Jesus talked about laziness. He talked about diligence. Anything Jesus talked about is important. Amen. So being diligent will help you in life, both in your natural life and your spiritual life. So today, we're going to talk about diligent rest. Diligent rest. Amen. What is rest? Rest. Um, rest is when one ceases from uh, exhaustion or physical activity from work. And uh, there are many types of rest. There are many types of rest. And there is a rest that requires diligence. There's a rest that requires your diligence. And the Bible calls that uh, Sabbath. It calls it uh, rest. This rest is different from just c ceasing from work. This rest is is a. Um, it's a it's a rest from work, but not a rest from activity. Amen. There's a there's a rest that requires your participation, your your diligence, and this rest is um, is part of your self-care self-care it's part of your self-care now we're not talking about sleeping we're not talking about sleeping uh, what we're talking about here is actually another word for it is called leisure uh, leisure Amen. Being able to do something that you enjoy. Amen. This is very important, being at rest. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. God is good. I want to read some passages here. Holy Spirit, you're wonderful. Ah, God is good. God is good. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you have breath, you give God praise. Amen. So, when God commanded the children of Israel, we see in Genesis 2, the Lord gave them a, a commandment. Actually, this was the first rest. God initiated the first rest. Genesis 2, from verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. He ended his work, which he had made. And then it says, and he rested 
on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Amen. Resting. Hallelujah. So, well, how did God rest? We know that uh, God was not tired. <laughs> so how did he rest? This rest is a rest of enjoyment. This is a rest. This is the rest of enjoyment. This is um. This is what uh, we call leisure activity. And um, and when you're resting, you are celebrating. It's important for you to celebrate stepping stones, uh, rather um, celebrate victories, celebrate uh, your wins. You have to learn how to celebrate your wins because in celebrating, you are resting. Amen. In celebrating, you are resting. Okay, I want to um, find a passage here. So God finished creating everything. The heavens and the earth, the seas, the animals, and mankind. Then what did he do? He enjoyed his labor. God rested. He enjoyed his labor. So he started fellowshipping with Adam. Amen. Resting. Diligent rest. Resting is when you learn to celebrate milestones, your victories, celebrate your wins. When you finish a project or even little things that you uh, achieve, anything you achieve, achieve, take time to celebrate it. Take time to celebrate it. That's um, because sometimes we would want to overlook celebrate, celebrating achievements, but it, it actually helps you to be productive when you can celebrate wins, no matter how small. Another word for this type of rest is called recreation. Leisure, recreation. What is recreation? Recreation is when you find time to do the things that you enjoy. Amen. Find time to do the things that you enjoy. And uh, you celebrate yourself, but also you celebrate as a team, you celebrate with others. You celebrate with others. Amen. You celebrate with others. Your, your victories, celebrate your victories, celebrate your wins. Be recreational. Even if it's completing a small task, treat yourself to something <laughs> like you finished. I finished this. You treat yourself to something. Even if it's a little break where you do something you like, that actually uh, refreshes you. It refuels you so you can uh, have more energy and strength to be more productive. 
Amen. So, here's some scriptures. Let's read some scriptures. This keeps you motivated. Celebrating uh, your wins and victories keeps you motivated. It makes life more fun. This is why people get a burnout in life. They get a burnout because they haven't organized their life to include celebrations, recreational activities that will keep them, keep them alive, keep them going. We all need that. Amen. Hallelujah. When the children of Israel rested, it was more than just not working. No, it was also spending time with God, spending time with family, um, enjoying, enjoying one another, enjoying life. You need to enjoy life. I like uh, what it says in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. I know that there is no good in them, but for man to rejoice and to do good in his life, and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. Enjoying your labor, knowing when to celebrate, how to celebrate, to celebrate with others. I like uh, okay. Also, Ecclesiastes eight fifteen. Then I commended mirth, because a man hath no better that no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry for that for that shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life which God giveth him under the sun and then uh, also Ecclesiastes 5 18 to 19 behold that which I have seen it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, knowing how to enjoy your labor, enjoy your labor, that's rest. Diligent rest. And sometimes, knowing how, to, knowing how to celebrate right sometimes requires planning. If you're celebrating with others, Sometimes you have to plan, plan things, you know, you schedule, you know, when uh, to do things with, with people. That requires a level of diligence, you know, planning. Hallelujah. There was one time uh, when the children of Israel was in the desert. God uh, had given them manna and quail and he instructed them for six days they can go and each day bring in the, the, the quail or the manna. But on the seventh day, on the sixth day, he said, bring uh, as much for two days because on the seventh day, they wouldn't work. 
So, uh, some people disobeyed God. On the seventh day, they still went out and they were looking for the, the manna and the quail, but it wasn't there. Hallelujah. So, the, the principle here is that you need to plan and find time for leisure, find time for recreation. That that helps with your productivity in life. You have to make time. You have to look at uh, rest as just as important as work. Imagine if you don't charge your batteries, or charge your phone rather. If you don't charge your phone. What's gonna happen? It's just gonna it's gonna run out of juice if you don't charge your laptop or whatever it is that requires recharging. Learn to recharge yourself by doing things you enjoy. It's not enough to just not work. Have Diligence to do the things you enjoy. Put that in your schedule. Amen. This is part of being diligent. Especially if you're a leader. If you're a leader, you learn to do things corporately. You rest corporately. You know? Go out to eat together. You... Um, have uh, activities together. That requires diligence. It requires planning. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, let's read some more passages. Hallelujah. This is part of your self-care. I noticed, for me, I noticed that uh, when I s spend time communing with the Lord in, in, uh, in worship, you know the word, the word koinonia is, is the same word for fellowship, for communion, and distribution and contribution. So I notice that when I uh, when I don't spend time first to minister to the Lord, to worship, to sing, and be filled with the Spirit, when I try to read my Bible, when I try to pray in tongues or do, to, do some type of ministry work, I get burned out. I get called a burnout. It's like I, I get tired easily. And the reason why is because I didn't spend time to refuel before I, before I started working. So even in the things of the Spirit, Rest comes first. Hallelujah. Rest comes first. Rest. And then when you rest, you can now, you're, you're now able to work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So remember, it's not just rest in not working, but it's rest in doing something you enjoy. It's leisure. It's recreation. And doing this with others requires diligence. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to uh, read a few more passages here.
So you celebrate goals, celebrate your victories, your wins, the things you achieve. Even little things, uh, task. You finish the task, you reward yourself. <laughs> yes, I finished this task. Amen. Have a reward system for yourself. Have a reward system for yourself. Okay, uh, here's a few more scriptures. Hallelujah. Of course, we also see in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, the Lord says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find a rest unto your souls. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. You see, how is it that his yoke is easy and his burden is light? A yoke is a commandment. You know, um, the scripture talks about how uh, the the Jews, the saved Jews, tried to put a yoke on the Gentiles to be circumcised and to, to do the things that they used to do. And, and the Apostle Paul told them, why, why would you put that yoke on them? Well, the Lord had set them free. <laughs> a yoke is a commandment. The Lord said, my yoke is easy. His commandments are easy. His burden is light. Tell me this, the Lord says, I want you to love your enemies. Do you think that's easy? It's, <laughs> it's only easy when you receive the ability from the vine. Remember John 15, that the vine can do nothing. I'm sorry, the branches can do nothing without the vine. We are the branches and he is the vine. So his yoke is easy when you stay connected to him. How do you stay connected to him? He said, if you abide in me, what is that? Abiding in him means spending time with him in prayer, in worship, in your Bible. After you spend so much time with the Lord, It'll be easy to love your enemies. You'll have the heart of Jesus. You know, you'll have the, the compassion of the Lord, the mercy. But if you're not staying connected to the vine, his yoke is not going to be easy for you. You're going to find yourself becoming very fleshly. The Bible tells us to walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For you to walk in the Spirit, you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And then he says, my burden is light. What is his burden? The burden of the Lord. They say that in the Old Testament when the, the prophet will speak a word, uh, a command, commandment or instruction. A burden of the Lord is more of a what God, the assignment that God has given you, what God told you to do. When God tells you to do something, if you don't stay connected to Him, it's going to be heavy. You say, why? This thing is too heavy. But his burden is light when you stay connected to the vine. His burden is light. Hallelujah. 
So you see, he said, come unto me. He said, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. So this rest that we're talking about, it's called diligent rest. So that means, where is the diligence? The diligence is you taking time to refuel yourself. You see, that's where the diligence is. You need to take time to refuel yourself. Do something you enjoy. Spend time with the Lord if you're ministering. You need to spend time with the Lord. Refuel. Otherwise, you're going to be burnt out. You're going to wear yourself out. And um, and that's the way it is. Hallelujah. He'll give us rest. Amen. If someone is lazy, they won't make time to refuel themselves. Because sometimes it requires planning and scheduling. You say, okay, I need to schedule. This is, this is my quiet time. This is my me time. <laughs> this is my recreational time. You got to put it in your schedule. If you don't put it in your schedule, then something else is going to come up. And before you know it, you're just burnt out. Just, you're burnt out. And then you start lashing at others. <laughs> Hallelujah. May the Lord help us to be restful. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. Um, amen. So celebrate. Celebrate your milestones. Celebrate uh, your achievements, whether small or big. Find time for recreation. Find time for leisure. Refuel yourself. Refresh yourself. And then get back to work. So this rest is not ceasing from uh, activity. It's not a rest of inactivity. It's it's activity at ease. It's activity that brings you ease. He says, my yoke is easy. It's activity that refuels you, refresh you. Everyone needs a hobby. So your hobby is things that you do, you enjoy, and it refreshes you. Everyone needs a hobby. Amen. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that's, that's our lesson for today. Diligent rest. Diligent rest. Be diligent to refresh yourself. All right, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want to pray for those that are watching. If you're sick in the body, I want to pray that God heal you. God is a healer. He wants you whole, body, soul, and spirit. wants you home. The number one barrier 
for sickness and self-forgiveness. Take a moment and forgive, release any offense, anything anybody has done to you, release it. Then I'm going to pray that God heal you. Okay. Father, I ask that you heal those that are watching. Heal their body. Touch them, Lord. Remove every sickness from their body. Remove every sickness in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, the Lord loves you. Hallelujah. The Lord loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Now, if you guys haven't already, I want to encourage you to go get this book, Face to Face Appearance from Jesus. Grab your copy. It's going to bless you. By, Written by my spiritual father, David E. Taylor. Get this book. If you want to see Jesus, I encourage you to get this book. After reading this book, Jesus will appear to you. I saw the Lord. After I read it, hallelujah, it's available, go to joshuamediaministries.org, get you a copy, also it's available on audio, you can also get it at Amazon, and then, uh, we had a series on humility, get this book as well, Victory Over Pride, Triumph in Humility. If you want to be close to Jesus, you need to be humble. Jesus said, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Take my yoke upon you. See, part of his yoke is being humble. Grab a hold of this book. It's going to give you so many different types of pride. You know, you examine yourself and see if there's any pride in me, Lord. You know, I had, I had to get a lot of pride i'm still working on some you know <laughs> we all need this book we all need this book get your copy victory over pride triumph and humility and then also grab a hold of this book the heart the currency of heaven paying the price you know the body of Christ, we know a little bit about paying a price. Catherine Kumi talked a little bit about it, Benny Hinn. But there's more. There's so much more in paying the price. Not many people know about the heart. There are so many different types of heart in the Bible. And with the heart, with the right heart, you can give to the Lord as payment. He said in Revelation 3, buy of me gold tried in the fire the Lord says Proverbs 23 23 buy the truth and sell it not Hosea so many scriptures hallelujah so get it at joshuamediaministries.org all right you guys we are done I want to encourage you to come to the fellowship. Sundays, we are at 14565 Valley View Avenue, Unit A, Santa Fe Springs, California, 90670. That's at 3.30 p.m. Saturdays at 3 p.m., we are at 1126 North Brookhurst Street, Suite 207. 
city of Anaheim, California, 92801. Amen. That's at uh, Cal UMS Private University. So Saturdays, we're doing a series on the heart. So, okay, we are done. Amen. Okay, children of God, God bless you. Remember to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love him more today than you did yesterday. And love him more tomorrow when it arrives. And then love people the way Jesus loves you. And all will be well. Amen. Till next time. Bye-bye.